Hi everybody. Picking up where we left off yesterday, all the holes have been drilled into the empennage fairing and now we are upsizing those to number 27's for number 6 uh, screws. And in this video we are going to do that and then we are, once those are drilled and we're happy with those, then it's just a matter of countersinking those for the heads of the number 6 countersunk uh, screws and then going down the horizontal and vertical stabilizer as well as the tail cone there, installing all of the nut plates and being happily done with all of that. Okay, so got some Q&A. Let's just jump straight into it. Some uh, people have been asking about the oil leak. So what happened when you started up that engine and got the oil leak? Well, let me tell you. Uh, the Airwolf remote air filter, oh, sorry, remote oil filter. So these have been known to have some issues with leaking. Uh, there's two reasons why they might leak. Uh, one is that the two ports that come off of the housing, off the back of the engine, are both AN fittings, double AN fittings. So both the, they're, they're, they're two 45 degree uh, AN fittings, but they're AN on both sides, right? Normally, 99% of the uh, fittings that we deal with as builders, right? It's NPT on one side, AN on the other. Well, these are not. These are both AN fittings. <clears throat> Problem with that is that these fittings need to point down, right? You can't just torque these two fittings until they're properly torqued because you don't know which direction they might accidentally, might actually face, right? So the way that they combat that is that there is a collar fitting that goes on the AN fitting that goes into the housing. And that is supposed to stop oil from leaking around. Now naturally you tighten it up until it's at the very final turn, but you'll notice if you started to try to torque it, it's like, oh, this thing's going to be sticking straight up. That doesn't sound right. And it doesn't. There's an actual much larger AN8 collar fitting that goes over the AN half that goes into the housing and has a rubber seal and you're supposed to tighten that up to keep oil from leaking out. So that's, a, that's one of the common places where oil can leak out. Now in this case, that's not where it leaked out. It leaked out from all around the housing because someone, dumb shit, that'll be me, uh, uh, eh, I'm just going to admit it, I didn't torque the housing down. Yeah, uh, so you're supposed to torque the housing in and then actually safety wire the bolts in place. I didn't do it. Simple as that. So that's why after about 85 seconds, I just start getting rained on with uh, fresh oil. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Uh, big pain. All right, so as you can see, very happily, the squeezer works very well. Thank God in this, uh, in this case, the squeezer actually fit, it fits in most places. Actually, I think it's the very back ones are a little bit of a pain, and the instructions do say that if you need to, remove the vertical stabilizer so that you can get to the back nut plates. Uh, I'm not doing that. It was just so much easier. I think th there might be one or two places where I have to use a rivet gun to put it in, but that's that's pretty much it. This is pretty simple stuff. Funny. It's funny, right? Five years we've been doing this together. I think for the first, like, three, it was all metalworking. And now... <laughs> Just to see some more metal working makes me very happy. All right, so while we've got this point of view, do notice, and we've talked about this before, notice the, the vertical stabilizer, as it is set up, doesn't exactly point in the middle. It's a little bit off to the left. That's the permanent rudder that Vans helps you with. Uh, you'll notice when uh, you try to attach it, and you're like, huh, that's funny. The hole for the bolt that attaches the front of the vertical stabilizer doesn't line up. Oh, I got to push it over a little bit. Huh. How the hell did I misalign this? You didn't. That's how it's supposed to be. And you'll notice that because the empennage fairing that I'm working on here just also happens to be to have been made with that twist in mind. So, yeah. Uh, everything's good here. Uh, one thing, uh, and also there have been, uh, someone had mentioned about 
having uh, the empennage fairing with a minimum amount of uh, uh, screws through it. I've seen it at Oshkosh. It is so beautiful, but uh, I, I don't have the time or the inclination. At this point, I've done enough customization. I don't care if it's an ice maker that can go in and it only weighs five pounds. I am not doing it. All right. In the next video, more things. So thank you for joining me, everyone. See you soon.